welcome back to another video now i'm going to do something a little bit different today normally i'm in a car filming or doing whatever but before i do anything i just want to say a big thanks to doc 74 it gives me this is a ph neutral snow foam that i used yesterday i did a few cars yesterday and used it uh, absolutely brilliant stuff easy to use love the little bottle design um, all instructions everything on the back as well if you're not sure how to use it but yeah, Doc74, go check them out. Facebook, website, based in Northampton, really good stuff. Like I say, I've only used a snow phone, but I intend on myself getting some more of it. So, you're wondering what I'm doing on this video today. Video is going to be a little different. I thought I'd go back. I talk about on a lot of videos on cars that I've had and cars that I've had in the past and problems, you know, just from experience. So. We're going to go back to the beginning i'm going to tell you about all the cars i've had and then i'm going to do my top three cars the dream cars that i want and then i want you to comment down below and let me know what car three cars sorry would be in your top three of cars i always wanted from the beginning i was a 17 year old lad at daff in northampton did an apprenticeship there uh did my test well i started driving and it sort of learning when obviously your 17th birthday start from there starting in december and passed in august and this was my first car a mark 4 five door fiesta i think it was maybe an lx or a zeta I bought it from a lad at work it had like a purpley greeny loads of different faded paint on it like the glittery look, look really smart some nice wheel i think that was 17 inch wheels what they were they were nice little car exhaust straight through as well yeah i mean as a first car <clears throat> no power steering no electric windows nothing like that i don't even remember the registration the registration was n796 ofe i remember that car but passed my test had that for a bit um and then unfortunately the head gasket went on that so that had to go and then I bought a Mark V Fiesta, this one here. Uh, that is was a W Reg, three door silver, one point two five again. Loved that car. It was so reliable. I think that's probably where the the passion for Fiestas always started. Um, I had that for a couple of years. I used to go to college in Bristol, so I used to drive down on it and that. And it was just an all round good car. I think I, in the end I put I put lots like, of big bad boy exhaust on it pipe like that on the back put some fake Cosworth wheels they, I don't know what they were off a Monday or whatever they were some lowering springs on it and stuff and then it you know that's how it all started with a passion for cars so I had that and then I sold that and then bought a Megan worst mistake of my life I bought a I can't remember what the year it was. It might, might have been an 03. It was like a bluey colour, five door, 1.5 diesel, Megan. And to this day, is the worst car I've ever had. Change the headlight bulb, nightmare. Absolute nightmare it was. But at the time, it was like, that's what I wanted. I had the old handbrake that was like an aeroplane. I thought it was cool. I mean, it... Yeah, it was just a bad car. I mean, I personally wouldn't buy one, but again, but you live and learn from your mistakes. So then after that, I had a Corsa C. Silver, 1.2 SXI. Absolutely loved it. It was such a good car. I put Urshma exhaust on it. I had Urshma like a fuel cap cover. It was like a sticker. That was like 20 quid that was as well back then when i was doing an apprenticeship and earning like pittance you know it was uh i had a bonnet bra on it bonnet bra like, and i had that on it and yeah i mean the the passion for cars was always still there it was always there do you know what i mean and the course i was it was a good car like, I, I really did like it um but you know as a young driver 1.2 you know you want to keep your insurance down the insurance prices even back then wasn't great but i can't imagine how you you young lot whoever watching this video feels you know insurance is ridiculous <clears throat> after the Corsa 
I uh, back then you could a lot of people were I don't know whether a lot of people were but I knew people that were doing it they were sort of like swapping cars instead of selling it going to buy the car you want they were swapping it so I had I had this 03 plate Corsa and I swapped it uh, with a, I think it was a lad in Coventry I'm not sure for a Mark V ZTEC S Fiesta it had it was just it was just a one point six no Puma engine anything like that. It had black Z Tech S wheels, had exhaust done on it. It had different cams in it. It had instead of run the bumper being like black plastic, it was all color code. It was a nice car. Here's a picture of it here. I loved that car. Like I absolutely loved it. And to this day, I'd probably still go and buy one now. Like as a you just don't see them anymore. And back then when I was, you know, 18, 19 or whatever I was, it was it was one of them cars to have. Um, and I just, I loved it. Unfortunately, <laughs> as you'll come to notice about my history of cars, I was going to put some fuel in it and start smoking out the back, got home, pulled the plug out and it was oil all in the plug. I was like, oh God. So took it to work. Found out one of the piston rings was seized in it. Put a full set of piston rings in it. Did all bottom end, did head gasket, did everything on it, new belt. And I just I just loved it. It was such it's just I don't know what it is about them cars. They're just such good cars, but common with the fiesta, rust under the arches and but yeah, it it brings back memory. It was a it was a good car, do you know what I mean? I loved it. And then obviously after that. I sold, I had that for, after I rebuilt the engine in it, I had that for probably seven months or so. And then stupidly, I got rid of it. <laughs> and I bought a, um, well, no, I swapped again, actually. I bought a red, here's a picture of it here, Saxo VTR, 1.68 valve. Back when I was young, that were, you know, for the older generation, it was Novas, it was... All that sort of cars, do you know what I mean? XR3 eyes and XR2 eyes, Fiestas and stuff. But for me back then, it was Mark 5 ZTEC S's, Saxo VTRs, VTS's, 106 GTI's, even a 106 Quicksilver, they were a cool car. Uh, but VTS is obviously higher insurance. But yeah, this the red Saxo VTR, and it was, it was, it was a good car. It was fun, like, it was... They had torsion bar on the back and someone had lowered it. And then when I looked at it one day at work, it, it weren't quite sat right because some, you know, and it was just, yeah. I mean, I wish I could find that car because it, it was a good car. I remember the girl I was, you know, with at the time and going to pick her up from work and then it, the fan used to come on all the time and it was like, it was just one of them cars. But yeah, it, I, I think I remember even the, even the induction kit on it was like a stupid cone filter, but yeah, I mean, it it's just one of them experiences. I have to say though, if you are a younger generation and you want to buy a cooler older car, well, they're older cars now, Mark 5 ZTEC S, Saxo VTRs, VTSs, you just don't see them so much anymore. And they were cool cars. Back in the day when I was younger, they were cool cars, you know what I mean? I'm not that old, but you know, Back then, they were cool cars. So after the Saxo, things became a little bit more sensible for a bit. I had a two-litre diesel Volkswagen Passat. Nice car. It was not electric. First time I had an electric handbrake. And it went like, yeah, it was quick. Like, 140 is standard, but, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it been mapped or whatever it was, but it was quick. Like, it was... Yeah, it was an impressive car, but just, I got bored of it. I remember the registration, funny enough, for any cruise people out there. The first letters of the registration were BJ. I thought, oh, okay. Anyway, so yeah, after the Passat, I had we went. I went and bought a Focus ZTEC S, uh, fifty eight plate. I think it was. It was okay. It was a good car, like, looked really good, like had the kit and everything on it, but it was 1.8 petrol, it was slow, it was, you know, I got bored of that pretty quick. And then after that, so yeah, after that, 
I went and put Mark IV Golf, coilovers, fake BBS wheels, exhaust, KO4 turbo, 1.8 GTI. When I was a kid, when I was when I was a kid, when I was younger, that was the car that I wanted. Mark IV Golf. It was painted in white with a Bora front end, red Recaro leather interior, flip out CD player. That car was a, that car was a dog. As it was. I loved it. We took it to a few shows. Edition thirty eight, great show by the way. Did a few good shows in it. Just loved it. It was just like back then. There was a car dealership in Northampton on, on the Wellingborough Road. If you know Northampton at all, opposite where the old house is now, opposite there, there used to be um, in a bus stop. Used to be a car garage, and I bought it from there. And um, yeah, I just I fell in love as soon as I saw it. I fell in love with it. If you knew back then about that car for sale, that you know that was the one. I think the registration was V eight two nine TVY. Whether it's still still there, but I don't know. But loved it. Great car. It caused me some issues in the end, but yeah. And I had to get rid of that because I had my daughter Lily at the time. Well, I didn't personally, but I was having, we were having Lily. So we got rid of that. And at the time we had a family car for a bit. Had I've had an Escort. It was a 1.8 Escort. It had sunroof in it. Had CD player. It was, yeah, it was, it was a good, it was all right. Like for rolling around in a bit. It was a good car. It lasted me quite a while. I sold that, and then I bought this Mark Five Fiesta ST. Sorry, not Mark Five. Mark Six Fiesta ST. Two liter. Yeah, lovely color. I had half leather in it, and I loved. Yeah, that that was another good car. I put, I put 50 mil lowering springs on it, so it proper dropped down. I had exhaust done. That was a Miltec exhaust. Um, was, I had HRDs. I had an air filter. And that's when I really started getting into the car stuff. That's when I started going to uh, the car stuff in Northampton, like the Ford, which still goes now, Northampton Ovals. Very good meets there as well. If you're in Northampton area and want to check it out. So I used to start going to them. I used to go to meet some Milton Keynes. I used to go everywhere in it. You know, it was a it was a really good car, and never had any problems with MOTs. Just flew for MOTs. Then after that, I bought this Mark Seven Fiesta ST. Now, all the at the time when I was going to the car meets and everything like that, you know, that was a car people were having. I bought that. Box standard. I put thirty five mil H and R springs on it. Great springs, by the way. Very very good springs. But had an induction kit on it, and I put what I put TRC front splitter. Just nothing mad on it, like. But it was a good. It was a good car, and I I can't recommend enough people. Like I know people say about them, and everyone's got a Mark Four, Mark Seven Fiesta ST. There's, there's a reason why people have got Mark 7 Fiesta ST because they're good cars. Like, I remember a friend of mine, he had an additional 30 Golf. I don't condone this, but we were having a little play on the dual carriageway and he was leaving me, like, but round a bend, he could get nowhere near me in it. It was, it handled so well. And yeah, I absolutely loved that car. Absolutely loved it. So I had that for a, a couple of years or so and then I got rid because I, I don't seem to I don't seem to keep cars for a long time I have to with this BM really because this is a genuinely good car but we'll get onto that a bit later so this is where it changed I had Ford, Ford, Ford Renault, Volkswagen, but mostly Fords in my life I sort of had. Uh, got rid of the Fiesta because at the time I was moving to a house and I bought this. Astra VXR. 2 litre turbo, mapped 280, 290 horsepower. It had 
springs done, had exhaust, exhaust like literally come out the back because on a lot of VXRs they come out like a triangle shape. This had two pipes out the back, had air filter done. It was a beautiful colour, hard and blue, amazing, amazing colour. It had the stereo done, it had lights here, there and everywhere, it had upgraded headlights, it had, also had LPG conversion, which was rare. There wasn't any VXRs I know that had it on. I'm real on fuel on LPG, but yeah, when it was matte, it was mapped on the sport bone, like I think a lot of Astra VXRs are. And when this is a diff, this is what I'm, this is what I'm going to say from it. As I'll tell you later on, I had a Focus ST, two and a half litre turbo. The Astra was around the same power as that, but the thing is with the Astra, it's it sounded good. The Focus sounds better, but the Astra was. It's hard, the hard way to the best way to describe it is you're scared that out of you and you you put your foot down it was only 280 like 290 horsepower but when you got on the power it was just like the steering wheel was like this and it was it was just a fun car to have and i'm hoping one of my good friends is he's got an astro vxr i'm going to hopefully do a video with that but yeah i love that car it was a lovely car really nice never had any problems with it it had when i bought it it had a gearbox done uh i think it's i think they're calling it i think they're an m32 gearbox they have problems with them and that had that all that done on it and everything but it was just a lovely car and yeah i really enjoyed that car but there was an urge and there was a love for a focus st so i went i can't remember where i bought it from i think that might be near country actually i bought a focus st 2.5 turbo completely standard it had a map on it like some plug in and play map but yeah love that car Loved it. That's where the, the passion for the Focus ST starts. Two and a half litre turbo. And I did springs on that. Had the wheels painted. Had the front bumper repainted. Because quite common then for lack appeal. Had that done. Had front splitter. Zone Sport grills. Whiz Beach induction. That cost me a fair bit of money. Like handmade pipe with a massive cosmo fit. It was like the size of my head. My head's massive. It had... What else did I put on it? Had reset valve that I put on it. It's that D res D cat. Yeah, I loved it. Like right. they're just and mine was an ST3 as well. It was just a good car, like awful on fuel, so bad on fuel. Like as I as I mentioned in some of these videos of the ones I've done before, they're terrible on fuel. Astra was miles better on fuel. Even with LPG, I think it would have still been better. But when you, when you put your foot down on it, it was just, yeah, it was something different. And I went, I did a few shows with that. And the best one I ever did, highly recommend, I did the Isle of Wight Takeover in it. Me, one of my best friends, and my sister, we went out to the Isle of Wight in it. And I had such an amazing weekend in it. Like, And even then, like, as much as I say it was bad on fuel, I went there <clears throat> and back. So from Northampton down to Southampton, the Isle of Wight round, the Isle of Wight, well, the roads are amazing, Isle of Wight, by the way. Back again and back home. And I think I use a tank and a quarter. So it, you know, it weren't too bad. But yeah, love that car. Just every time I get in one, it's just one of them cars that, I think everyone has a, a love for a car, whether it be a Vauxhall, a Volkswagen, but that it was just a, a, a lot of proper love for a car. It was just, yeah, it was an amazing, amazing car. <laughs> I got rid of the Focus. I didn't get a great price for it. Like, I was just still at it now. The price of the car has gone through the roof. But after that, I bought a 2-litre diesel Audi A3S line, black. This is it here. This is after I put coilovers on it. Black leather. For an S line, I was pretty gutted because... It didn't have a great spec on it. it being, this is the only thing with Audi, I'm not going to moan, but like it was an S-Line and that. It had black leather, no heat seat, no cruise control, nothing like that on it. And yeah, that had DSG gearbox in it. I had it serviced, DSG gearbox and everything done. But it was a, it was a nightmare of a car. I was so gutted because 
it broke down. It had uh, in the first couple of months. I had it. I had two drive shafts done. I had an alternator, a battery. I had big problems with DPF. Like I don't know whether the person that had it before me lived in London, and because that's where I bought it from, and it was had regen problems. Had DPF. And it cost me. It cost me over a thousand pounds to have literally the DPF taken out, cleans, new pipes. But it was just a nightmare of a car. Absolute nightmare. But I put the K, I bought some KW coilovers off my mate, slammed it down a bit, and it was, yeah, it looked smart when it was slammed. Like, it was one of the one of the good looking cars I had. It was just a shame mechanically wise, it was shit, to be honest with you. Absolute shit. And then after the A3 became the prize gem, the one car that, I lo yeah, the best car, one of the best cars I've had. But, yeah, it is the best car I've had. So I bought this off a friend of mine. Mark, another Mark Seven. It would, it had fully forged engine. It had X forty seven R turbo, intercooler. It had coilovers. It, it literally had everything done to that car. I. It wasn't built by me. It was bought. I bought it as it is, and I loved it. It was so so fast it was like i think it had, i think it had, when it was dynoed at one point i think it made 352 horsepower for a front wheel drive little car like that, it was a lot and i cherished that car absolutely cherished cleaned it all the time always always um checking out all the oil checking all the um cooling all the time serviced it myself like it didn't, it had, it didn't have shit stuff in it. It had good oil. It had good spark plugs in it. Like every when I serviced it, like I got it checked over again, and like it was just a good car. It was, yeah, it drew a lot of attention, and I truly, truly love that car. But I, I do a lot of miles with working. Every not a lot of miles, but it was the miles were adding up, and. I was always worried about, you know, if you own a Fiesta, you know, you know about, I was worried about it getting stolen and curbing wheels and everything. So that, that went, um, yeah, loved, loved that car. Whoever's got it now, you've got a good car there. So after the Fiesta went, <laughs> things changed again. So after the Fiesta, I went backwards. I bought a, I bought a Mark V ZTEC, uh, sorry, ST off my brother-in-law that I drove around in for a bit. And then after that, so I just used it for a bit. And then I bought a TT. V-Reg TT. Light blue, green, slash, leather interior. That was mapped. Quick car. It was quick, but had problems like I put drive shaft knuckles on it. Like I don't know what it is with me and buying cars with drive shaft problems. Like from the beginning to even like even with the BM, like it's just drive shaft problems. I'm just bad luck with it. I don't know, man. I'm not checking and popping. I'm not sure, but yeah. So I had the TT for a bit, and I thought I could get away with having the TT. Like with having a child, like well, she was a good age. But you couldn't get a car seat in the back. And it was just a nightmare. Just a nightmare to have. So I sold that. Didn't lose any money on that. Broke even on it. Got rid of the TT. And then I was like, right, I'm going to finance a, a decent car. But I'm not going to do it yet. So then I had some money and went and bought a cheap £600 Saab 9 Free Estate. Now... To this day, I cannot, if you are looking for a run around car, I cannot recommend having a Saab 93 anymore. Like, it was just ridiculous on fuel. Like, it was so good on fuel. It was six speed manual. The gear knob used to fall off all the time. It used to change. I remember my brother in law drove it and then he was like, oh, the gear knobs fell off. Like, the steering wheel was slightly wonky, but. It was a good car. Like it never ever let me down. Like I had to put uh, a rear control arm on it because it had worn away. But even when I went for MOT, I think I put a downpipe actually as well. 
But when I went MOT on it, like just it pissed for an MOT. One nine diesel. It was just a damn good car. And I for anyone that is looking for a cheap running around car as a family or anything like that, I cannot recommend a Saab 93 estate anymore. It was just yeah, it was a very, very, very good car. And it was just it was literally bulletproof. Literally bulletproof. But I rolled around in that for like a year. Saved, worked hard. So worked hard, turned up. And I waited and waited and waited. And then I bought what I've got now. F10, 520DBM, M Sport, 8-speed auto. Love it. Absolutely love that damn car. Like, originally, I, was, I wasn't I was having that. Originally, because when I bought it, it was on lockdown. So I was originally having a Estral Blue 330D. That was an M Sport as well. But when they went to buy it, it had problems with it, so I didn't have that. And then I got what I've got now, F10. Bar the diff blown up. I can't recommend that car enough. It's just it's an, an unreal car. It it's just it's got everything I need in it. Like my mum and my parents live up in Yorkshire way, so you know, I, I do a good three hour drive in it and you get out and you don't feel like, oh, that was a long drive. Do you know what I mean? It was just just breezes it. Cruise control, sat nav, air con, heated seats, loads of room in it. Like I can play off my phone in it. Like just it does everything I need to and it'll be one of them cars. It, it's nearly coming up to a year I've had it and I just can't recommend enough to everyone about buying one. You know, mine's only 63 play and it's still got decent technology on it. It's still a very, very, very good car. But if you're looking for a a nice looking car, like an executive car that does everything you need to do, F10 BMW, I cannot recommend highly enough. There's a, I wouldn't say a brief, there's a history of the cars I've had. Some interesting cars, some hot hatches, some little small hot hatches, if you want to call them, some sensible cars, some mental cars, some, and a car that does everything on it too, and is one of the best cars I've ever had. If I had to pick out of all them cars, if I had, let's do a question, if I picked three out of them cars that I would pick in a three car garage, not a dream, I'll do that next, my dream three car garage, but my three car garage, I'd pick the BM, Mark 7, uh, fully forged Fiesta ST, and then I'd probably pick the Mark 5 Z tickets. Just all round great cars for their, I wouldn't say great, but all round good cars for what you need. Now, the final one, we'll do my three car dream garage. So final one, three car dream garage. Now, I like Lamborghinis, I like Ferraris, I, you know, everyone likes them sort of cars, but if I picked my three car dream garage, and I want you to comment below your three car dream garage, whatever it is, let's hear what it is. So my three car dream garage, Mark II Focus RS, Lime Green. Oh, just. I think even if you're not a Ford fan and you see them car, I think they're just just one of them cars you go, do you know what? I really like that. I really, really like that. Um, my second car I would pick in a three-car dream garage would be Mercedes E63 S Edition 1. Just like, I don't know whether you watch DMO's videos, but what a car, like, it's just, it's something you can take your kids to school in, something you can go and do family visits in, and something you can go and kick its head in, like, down the road. It's just like an unreal, unreal car for what it is. Um, And then third and finally, it's, it's a tough one. For me... Range Rover SVR. Now, 
I've always been a big fan of a Range Rover. Just think they're a cool car. And having a five litre V8 as well, you know, always sort of helps. That would be my three car dream garage. Four by four, Range Rover SVR, five door E63 edition one, and uh, Mark II Focus RS. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Something a little bit different. Please drop a comment and like. If you subscribe, it's even better. But drop a comment below and let me know your three car dream garage. And if you've had any of the cars that I've had, let me know. Let me know what you think of them. Let me know whether you, you had bad experience with them, you had great experience with them. I want to know what you think of them cars. Thank you for watching. I hope I can see you all again soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, the month, the rest of the year. Be blessed and I'll speak to you all soon. Take care.